I'm here, my friends, to talk to you about the greatest story you never saw and or Star Wars. That's right, I am the man you may know as Z, and I am here to go over Star Wars Andor. That's right, I'm one of those guys. The, you know, the kind that tells you that there's been not a goddamn good bit of Star Wars since the original trilogy, and that everything else is crap. The prequel series was George Lucas losing his mind and getting ready to sell the thing, and that the new trilogy is absolute trash and garbage. Yes, that is true, but I am here to tell you that I just watched something absolutely thrilling. Probably one of the best scripted shows on television. You probably watched House of the Dragon. You shouldn't have missed Andor, shockingly enough. Written by Tony Gilroy, and I'm going to try to paint a picture for you. But before we get there, let's just take a look. I am not one to agree with the show media. You may know that from my previous videos, where I rip on everything. This is definitely the best series that's on Disney Plus by far. And it's it's better than Mandalorian. I love me some Baby Yoda, but this is this makes the Mandalorian look like child's play. And they're going to get the, you know, Deadline, Rolling Stone, and uh, The Verge, all shill media is telling you <laughs> Andor is the best series and one of the best uh, greatest Star Wars series there's no space wizards no Jedi, no lightsabers nothing like that but it's, it's an, a very very compelling story so let me try to paint a little bit of a picture here for you here we're talking about a grifter a vagabond who doesn't have a place in the world and we're talking about Cassie and Andor what's interesting about Andor is he is not only He's an orphan, and Cassie and Andor is not actually his name. He was raised by a woman who picked him up as he was some sort of like cast aside vagrant child from a mining facility where all the adults were killed. And her name is Maeve something or other Andor. That's her name. So maybe the series itself wasn't actually about Andor. Now here come spoilers. I'm, I'm gonna set the scene as best I can. What I found so compelling about this finale in itself is it ties all of the little pieces together. Now, not every single plot thread was tied together neatly in a bow, but it was written so well. Probably some of the most compelling 20 minutes I've ever seen on television. Like, I'm not kidding. I, I don't know how to... I'm going to try my best to describe this to you. But music was a big component of it. From what I've read, Tony Gilroy... Uh, Spent a lot of time trying to find the right composer for this. And every single intro had the Andor theme, but they were all composed differently in all 12 episodes. Now, here you have this grifter who's been sucked into what's the, the very, very inklings of a rebellion against the Empire. And he goes on a heist. Heist succeeds, but he wants nothing to do with the rebellion. Ends up taking his winnings from this heist ends up in jail, learns some interesting things there, makes some friends, loses friends, and then finds out that his mother, that he left on the, his home world, that he knew everybody, he was, he was friends with everyone, he left her behind and she ends up passing away. Now, this culture on this planet of Fenrix has an interesting cultural component to it. And this was something that I, I just found really compelling that they kept doing and they kept building on is that when you die and you're a member of their society, you become a brick. They, they uh, cremate you and make you a brick that they put into the walls. Now, if you notice, when we look at all of uh, Fenrix in Andor, it's all of this brick housing, and, and, and there's it's like this interesting society where they're, they're clearly industrial, they build things, they, they do things. Well, apparently they're critical to the Empire where they build something for them. And they've been left alone most of the time, but with some of the things that happen where... Cassian uh, caused a, a bit of a stir with a, with some murders that he participated in. Those end up coming back to not only hurt him, but hurt his family and all his friends. So he finds out about his mother's funeral. And the people Fenrix have been petitioning 
the Empire, that they want a certain amount of people at the funeral, and there's been concessions and, and all this, but the people of Fenric, they don't care about what the Empire wants. They're going to have their proper uh, send-off for this woman, who was clearly very important in, in, into the, in their society. So she was a sister of Fenric, so there's, there's this whole procession. And this 20 minutes of television is so amazing. They start off with a, a band. It's a funeral procession, and there's a band warming up, and they're all wearing these uniforms. Some of the uniforms are actually remin reminiscent of the early uniforms for the the rebellion. So there's clearly some sort of tie here. The music, I, I'm hearing this music, and I'm going, this sounds familiar. It's the Cassian and well, it's the Andor theme. Shockingly enough, I'm, I'm hearing it played. It's connecting to me. It's this weird sad discordant melodramatic note these strange instruments and these people are marching down the streets because they're clearly going to celebrate this woman the empire is none too happy about this all the players are in place because they all think cassie and andor is going to come back to the to pay tribute to his mother that means that the people he knew from the heist who are part of the rebellion who he wanted nothing to do with want him dead that means their agents are there. That means the agents that have been following him from the Empire, from the Intelligence Bureau of the Empire are all following him because everybody wants to catch Cassian because he may know who the leader of the rebellion is. And this is very important to the Empire because they struck a very uh, powerful blow that bo uh, bothered the Emperor. And these people in the Empire are career climbers who are looking to move their careers forward. So everyone is basically waiting for Cassie to show up. They all think that she's, he's going to pay respect to his mother. But what they don't realize is that once he gets there, he finds out that his former girlfriend, uh, Bricks, has been tortured. And this is one of the most compelling scenes in the entire show. I just I found this like chilling to me. As the procession is walking and they're playing their, their instruments and they're going through... You see Cassian realizes that there's a trap been laid for him. He he understands what's going on, but he hears the music. He understands what the procession means to him and means to his people. And then you get a cutaway to his girlfriend who's been tortured, interestingly enough, by the sound of like screaming children. She's been tortured, but she hears the Cassian theme, which is part of their culture. And she starts to cry. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful shot. And th this whole thing is amazing because it's 20 minutes of this like funeral procession and all the pieces are moving. Some of the agents of Luthien, who's the head of the rebellion, they're looking to get some specific ISB agents who they think are very, they've been uh, pretending to be residents of Fenrix and, and they're out to get them. So everything starts moving and they all finally come to a head because the Empire is not interested in letting them do their funeral procession with hundreds of people in the streets wandering around while they're trying to capture Cassie and Andor. And then you find, uh, then they all kind of uh, congregate in the center square and you come to find out um, the little droid has a message from Maeve, uh, Cassian's mother, who you find out that her, I think her middle name is like Cassian or something. So he, she named this little orphan that she picked up after herself and that the show is called Andor, but it really might not just be about Cassian. It might be about me because she's the spark that starts the first rebellion because she gives this empowered speech where she's talking about waking up and stop sleeping in, in our town is, is important. And then just the rage and, and the anger. And one of the most compelling characters is actually a young boy who's been radicalized because his father was tortured to death by the empire and here he in the beginning of the episode he had been building a bomb well things start happening you know they start the the rage you can feel the rage and then the riot starts and th these people are just so angry at the at them and then <laughs> one of cassian's friends is beating people with his mom's brick it's like so crazy and Luthien gets to see all this the the leader of the rebellion and he's like stunned at what's going on the imperial agent who thinks she's completely in control, finds herself in chaos and almost finds herself dead. And everything kind of falls apart and these people aren't even interested in, in, in like shooting the empire. They're just, they're in full of rage and beating them to death. It's 
It's it's really crazy. I I I loved it. I loved every second of it. I thought the funeral procession was. I watched it like four or five times. It was one of the most amazing, well edited, put together scenes in a very long time. This was a masterclass in direction, writing, unbelievable. I, I can't believe it. And I know nobody's watching this, so. I would say I would compel you to take it upon yourself to watch this if you haven't. I know I said spoilers, and for those of you who did watch it, I hopefully was able to compel you or at least give you an idea of how I felt about it. Um, stunning. Just absolutely awesome. I just I couldn't get over it. I know how the people who saw Luke Skywalker when he showed up in The Mandalorian, I had some feels there, but this, this gave me something different. This gave me... Um, it was meaningful. There was, there was It wasn't just member berries this was something powerful new and meaningful that i haven't seen in modern tv in a long time uh really great uh the uh, the only other thing i wanted to point out that there was a post credit scene well it's two things i want to point out one is cassian does not become the big giant hero that everyone thinks oh cassian leading the rebellion no he only does one thing he saves the girl that he loves and he takes her away from everything and he's he doesn't start the riots he doesn't start the rebellion he just takes care of one person and then he makes sure that she and his friends get off the planet alive and then he goes and he finds luthien and he says either kill me or bring me aboard because he finally realized what was important they even tied it to the heist episode where the young kid who gave him his manifesto as to why the rebellion should start he gave him the, uh, he was listening to the kid's m memoirs and it really stirred something in him. But I don't think it was until the moment where he heard the funeral procession and the way that the music just crescendoed, he, it, it hit him somewhere. And I was just astonished. And then the final piece I'll leave you with is if you missed it, because if you watch it on Disney Plus, there's a good chance that they skipped it on you. There was a final credit scene, which was also very interesting. Cassian, while he was in prison, they were working on units because it was cheaper to use slave and, and prison labor than it was to use droids. Those units that everyone was concerned about, they were building the Death Star. The thing that Cassian will finally give his life to stop poetic it's great stuff tell me what you think were you impressed will you watch the show now now that i spoiled everything i hope you get how i felt about it i thought it was amazing absolutely just awesome i can't say anything more about it i was, it was a little slow burn i know it was a little slow there at times i was questioning it because i have such little faith in star wars but now not that my faith has been renewed in Star Wars, but I know, and I hopefully you know, that there is a direction Star Wars can go that we can have. It's satisfying. It's interesting. I know people complain about lack of aliens, but if you know anything about the Empire, you know they're xenophobic. They don't like aliens. There were aliens in it. The aliens, I thought, were poignant. They had a point to being there. The aliens were there when they needed to be. They actually showed something about uh, class. You know, the lower you went down in Cur Curacao, uh, the more likely you were to see aliens because they're not allowed on the top levels. Just well-written show. I can't say enough about Tony Gilroy. Great job. I'm not going to go into the articles uh, just because, look, that's show media, but they're right for once. I, I agree, and I'm willing to admit when I was wrong. I was a lit must. If you watch my 10-second reviews of Andor, I was a little shaky on it, but it won me over. Hopefully it won you over. Anyway, thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you get a chance, check out our full-length audio podcast. It is free to you on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. We would love for you to subscribe there. Like and subscribe. But as for myself, I am on to the next one.